I woke up at like 3.30 this morning. And maybe part of it is my fault. Because last night I went to bed early. Like 9 o'clock, which is early for me. And I actually felt good about it because it was like, okay, I'm going to get a good night's sleep. Sure enough. 3.30 in the morning and I wasn't having a dream or a nightmare but it felt like I just jolted awake and I didn't have to pee or go to the bathroom or anything like that I was just up awake and of course I tried to go back to sleep you know what it was I woke up and it was just so quiet in my place and I don't know, I could just like feel that. The quietness and the emptiness. And I was laying on my bed, obviously. I always lay on the same side. The spot next to me is empty. I just thought, you know, it'd be kind of nice if someone was there. That thought was there. And for me, obviously, it's a romantic connection because that is my highest value that I seek. So yeah, I'm like, I wish there was a woman here. Because that's kind of what I've been thinking about recently. You know, after all of these dates that just go nowhere, these connections I start but end up going nowhere I end up losing these connections and I talked about this with you earlier you know about grief and how you can allow yourself to grieve a lost connection it doesn't matter how big or how small Yeah, so I think that's what it is because last week I ran in to that girl that I took out on a couple dates from work. Yeah. Well, I had to actually go in and even though we saw each other the other time, another time, and we gave each other like a head nod, you know, we were kind of across the way. I was like, okay. You know, but this was the first time that we interacted with each other, you know, face to face. And, you know, it was just, I was just there to drop off some paperwork thing that I got to sign every now and then. And it was very professional, kind of transactional. And, you know, we didn't talk about anything else. So we almost acted like nothing had happened that we didn't go on all those dates together and on one hand I thought that was kind of nice because it was it was like back to kind of like a new normal you know I don't want to say back to normal because you know before this I think we were a little more friendly Obviously a little more flirtatious with each other, certainly. You know, not to say that it can't be friendly again, not flirty again, but it could be friendly again. But honestly, with her, I don't think so. And that's not, like, a bad thing, you know. This is what it is, and it's okay. Because really... If I was honest with myself, too, you know, the elements weren't there between us. You know, and I'm seeking that deeper connection with someone that I can connect with on deeper levels. And it's not to say we didn't have some real moments together, but, you know, they weren't everlasting, which is that kind of connection I want. And 
that is okay. This connection didn't go anywhere. I have grieved for that. But grief isn't linear. So, you know, those feelings come back. And I haven't been sleeping well, and I think it's because of that. My thoughts are once again occupied on the lack of this connection. And not just with her, I mean just a connection with someone else. It's been a lifetime of trying to find that connection. And you know, I know, that's the beauty of life, is to kind of be out there and take those opportunities when you can. So even though this has brought up sadness and this isolated loneliness that you know, I'm starting to feel again, I don't regret it. I'm glad we went out. We had some nice moments. And also for me, I put myself out there again. I faced rejection and I pursued this value that I hold. So like, if I could do it over again, I would do it the exact same way. So, yeah. But that's not to say that those feelings, sadness and the rejection of it doesn't still hurt or sting when you think of them. But, you know, what I'm trying to do more now is to just kind of recognize and acknowledge those feelings that I have, those emotions I feel, and to bring them along on the ride. They are part of who makes me who I am anyway. Bring them on the ride. That's what I'm trying to do. So even though, you know, I've mentioned this before to you, trying to do just more solo dating, which doesn't even have to be, you know, solo dating is helping for me, but it's just going out and having a meal by yourself at a restaurant, sitting down and being okay with being there by yourself. You know, because that was kind of, not like a huge fear thing, more of a, just a social anxiety kind of thing of it. It's like, I don't like going to those places alone and you just kind of feel like you're alone, even though you're surrounded by all these people because you want to be there with someone. I want to be there with someone. But to go to those places, sit down and sit with your feelings. They're there with you. So like the other day I was there in a restaurant and that's what I felt. I felt here I am staring at a blank chair, an empty chair, and I wish someone was sitting there. I feel sad about that. Okay, we're going to do that. But also, I'm going to enjoy these noodles. I'm going to enjoy this meal. I'm going to enjoy the drink I ordered with it. I'm not going to let one thing, you know, negate it. I'm not going to let it take away from the meal from my moment there. And I enjoyed my meal. I found joy in that experience. And I also felt sadness in that experience. And I think that's what I kind of mean by bringing those emotions along with you. Acknowledging them. Because I think before what I would do is try to avoid them. And it's like, uh, who are you kidding, you know? No, no, I'm not sad right now. I, I want to be here alone. 
Maybe you're trying to reframe it for yourself. But no, you feel sad because you want to be there with someone. That's okay. Hello, take a seat. Let them sit there, right? Because you can also be there and say, you know, I feel like these noodles, I like this restaurant. Here I am, I'm going to enjoy this meal. I can do that too. So yeah, just that's what I'm trying to do more of, is just bring those with. Because in the past, I think I would definitely let them determine that. Meaning, like, I wouldn't go to these restaurants because I didn't want to be seen with no one. Even though, who cares? But it's all in my head, my own anxieties. And also, carrying that value, connection, that's what I want. So for me, in those situations, that's how I feel. You know, I can't speak for everyone. There are people who I would admire that they're just, they don't think of that. They're like, oh no, I'm, I'm going to this restaurant because I'm hungry and I want to eat there and it look good I don't care if I'm alone or with people you know me I'm just more I think about that so yeah <laughs> and uh, but you know I eventually went back to sleep but had to wake up for work yay You know, while I was walking into work, and I know this might be like my hippie brain, the hippie side of me that wants, you know, world peace. I'm walking by, and I'm guilty of it myself. No one's looking at each other. We're all kind of avoiding each other. You know, you might get the occasional head nod, some kind of acknowledgement in that way. But we aren't getting a true interaction. You know, we're not going, hey, good morning, Sandra. Good morning, your ASMR friend. We aren't getting that. But, you know, I know it's not a small town, it's a huge city where strangers, crazy shit happens in Night City. I mean, two weeks ago, I saw a cyber cycle run in the streets. It's pretty up there with scary moments of my life. So I get it. You know, we're all just trying to get to where we need to go. And, you know, maybe speaking for myself, where I don't necessarily want to be bothered. So I don't want to bother anyone as well. Because like I said, I'm guilty of it too. I'm not, I'm not the one going, good morning. Even though, of course, there's a part of me that wishes I was that energy. I wish I wasn't so in my head. It's almost ingrained where it feels unnatural to be that way. But I wish I was. I mean, you know, there are some people that just walk into a room and they're like a beacon, a beacon of light. You know, they just radiate and have this energy to them. And people gravitate towards them. Of course I wish I had that. You know, connecting with people and making an impact. Yeah, that'd be great. And maybe... Maybe I can get there. And that's what I guess keeps me going is silly as that sounds. Maybe it's from growing up with Star Wars where this is their main things. Hope. But it's so true. Hope and a belief that even though Things may look the bleakest. 
that one day the stars will align for you. And if I want to be that energy, I have to be that energy. You know, and I recognize it isn't a switch. It's like working out. It's like building up muscle. You have to keep doing it. So I'm trying to put myself out there. Be nice and be kind to people. You know, so like on my delivery routes. I'm trying to be even kinder to people, you know, just to smile more, even though I'm kind of insecure about my smile because you know, my teeth aren't perfect, they're kind of stained. And so, you know, I never smile in a photo. In my profile pics, I will, but it's like one photo out of 80 which isn't a lot if, you know, a lifetime of selfies. Or whatever the real number is anyway. You know, I put those in my profile photos. But in my everyday life, you know, in moments, yeah, I just don't smile a whole lot in photos. But human to human... And when I interact with people, I'm trying to smile more and I'm trying to be more present and just, even if we don't talk just to have good energy, I want them to feel like I am a kind person. You know, I've mentioned this before, how there are some people that just, they don't appreciate the job. They don't care about what I do. They just want their package on time to their location. They could care less. You know, they almost would probably prefer a drone to drop it off than a human. You know, that's the clientele. That's world. That's life. You just have to accept it. You, know? you can't please everyone can't make everyone happy but you know you don't have to be an asshole to people you know a stranger that you don't know we're all fighting a battle you know I try to remind myself that, that we are all fighting a battle that no one else sees so, try to be kinder to people. And yeah. Because that's what I was getting to. You know, this morning walking, I felt that. For me, it's like any kind of nice fantasy. What if I was the person that changes that? What if on my morning walk, my spirits uplift someone else. Hey, good morning. Oh, good morning. You know, maybe that person walked by like, wow, everyone in the city ignores me. But then that person said good morning to me. And maybe it changes the trajectory of their day. They have a more positive outcome so they transfer that kindness as well maybe they do the same thing oh well they say good morning I'm going to say good morning to this person it's fantasy but wow that feeling is pretty nice thinking about that what if your kindness spreads that way and honestly you know, you don't know. Yeah, there could be documentations of it, certain instances, but, you know, 99 out of 100 times, 
You're not going to see it. You're not going to know about it. Having that outlook of, what if that kindness spreads? Because it's happened to me. And I'm sure it's happened to you. You know, maybe you get that haircut and someone gives you the compliment of it and it makes you feel good. Or, you know, maybe you hold the door open for someone. Someone held the door open for you. You know, those small kind of moments. Or in a moment of, you know, when you're in line for groceries or something and you're a little short and someone helps you purchase them. You know, that would be a bigger act of kindness. It might sound little, but it's a bigger act of kindness that I'm sure that that person in need would appreciate it. Yeah. So that's why I always try to remind myself of those moments to be present for them and to be kind to that person because you don't know what they're going. And that's why I'm bringing my emotions with me, like I was saying earlier, where if I'm feeling sad, bring it with, because I'm going to a place that I know will also bring me joy. You know? And you can maybe change your perspective if you, if you do that enough. I guess that's what I'm hoping. But yeah, I think, you know, so even though I didn't sleep well last night, I've been dragging all day, carrying those emotions, tired, sad, and lonely. I can also walk around Night City, look up at the amazing, beautiful architecture. And I like to think about who lives in these places. You ever look at windows and you just think, what's it like in there? What's that place like? What's that home feel like? And we are all connected even if we don't interact necessarily. So in some way, I'm fulfilling that connection by being out in the world. Because if I am putting myself out there and I'm allowing myself to be in the moment, well, that means that if an opportunity arises, I'm in a position to take advantage of that. It goes back to that feeling of hope when it feels so dark because let me tell you, this feeling of loneliness has really gotten me this year. I'm feeling that, that bleakness. I can carry that and also carry hope that if I just keep getting up, keep going out, and one day those stars will align. And I think about you. And maybe you're feeling the same or in a similar way. And it excites me to think it's positiveness that I may never see, but perhaps, as they will, the stars will align for you as well.